Hello and welcome to this revision video on biopsychology brought to you by tutor to you All of the information on this video is based on the Advanced Information Guidance 2022. So just before we get started, a disclaimer to let you know that all of the materials used on this course are produced by tutor to you and they are intended to reflect the style of questions and mark schemes present on AQA A-level psychology exams, which are available in the public domain. So what you'll need for this video is a pen or a pencil and a piece of paper so that you can answer the questions as we go along. So the main focus of this video is understanding the question when considering some biopsychology questions which could appear on your exam on paper two. So starting with the first one, Gillian is using the post-mortem method of studying the brain and is excited to find the area of the brain that was causing her patient difficulty talking. Mark is frustrated because he has also been trying to find the cause of this. However, he has been reviewing fMRI scans and EEG readings of the patient from when he was alive. Now you have two questions that I would like you to have a go at here. The first one is to explain one reason why a post-mortem can be more beneficial than an EEG when studying the brain. And specifically here, it says, make sure that you refer to the scenario in your answer. You have four marks available for this question. Question number two, explain one reason why Mark would have greater success if he used ERPs instead of EEGs to investigate the patient. Again, this is a scenario based question and you have three marks available to you here. So just pause the video, have a go at these questions and whenever you're ready to go again, just press play. So hopefully you've been able to have a go at both of those questions. Now what we're going to do is have a little look at the mark scheme which was available for both of the questions so that you can compare your answer to what it was exactly that the mark scheme wanted. Because it's really important when you go into your exam that you are able to understand the mark scheme and really get to grips with how you achieve full marks in each of the questions. So this was a four mark question and four marks could be huge in an exam, it could be the difference of a whole grade. So it's really important that we work out how we can get four marks on this question rather than just one or two or even zero. So this question was explain one reason why a post-mortem can be beneficial or more beneficial than an EEG when studying the brain. Refer to the scenario in your answer. So to gain a level two answer here or to achieve three to four marks, the explanation needed to be clear and coherent application to the scenario needed to be mostly clear and effective but lack detail in places there is some appropriate use of specialist terminology if you were to achieve a level one or one to two marks for the question explanation is limited or muddled application to the scenario is also limited or muddled the answer lacks clarity and accuracy and specialist terminology is either absent or inappropriately used to get zero marks for this question, no relevant content would have been mentioned at all. So you can really see the difference between the two mark bands available here. One is that your explanation and your application is very clear, it's very focused, it's coherent, and that you've used specialist terminology. Level one is all about your explanation being a little bit more muddled, not making sense at times, or you may be omitted or missed out some specialist terminology. So for this question, what it was really after was for you to be able to distinguish between a post-mortem and an EEG, but also mainly consider why a post-mortem would be more effective than an EEG when studying the brain. So what are the benefits of a post-mortem over an EEG while relating it back to the scenario of Gillian and Mark? So there are two main parts to this answer. The first part is that a post-mortem can allow intricate and deep parts of the brain to be investigated that are not able to be studied when the patient is alive. For example, and then here you can see it's being related back to the scenario, Gillian has been able to reach these deeper areas and structures of the brain, whereas Mark has not. The second part of the answer comes from talking about the EEG. So an EEG is only used on patients who are alive so that brain waves can be recorded. Therefore, this would not have helped to identify specific brain areas implicated in the patient's condition. 
So you can see here you are distinguishing between a post-mortem and an EEG, but explaining why in the case of this specific scenario, a post-mortem would have been better to use instead of an EEG. Question number two, explain one reason why Mark would have had greater success if he used ERPs, which are event-related potentials, instead of EEGs to investigate the patient. Three marks available on this one. Now, if we start at the bottom, you would achieve one mark if the answer was not very focused on Mark and it's muddled or very limited. Two marks if the answer is limited in contextualization and focused on Mark. The answer will be generally coherent and effective and you will show good understanding. And for three marks, so for full marks on this question, the answer will be contextualized and the focus is on Mark. So again, you can see how when you are given a scenario or an item, it's really important that you relate that focus back to the scenario at all times. It says to get three marks, the answer will be coherent and the application will be effective and good understanding will be evident. So here are some possible suggestions from the mark scheme for a sample answer. So the first thing you need to think about is why might an ERP be more effective than an EEG in this situation? So starting off with a simple point such as EEGs allow general brain activity to be recorded and analysed, but ERPs allow more specific findings to be made. Therefore, you distinguish between the both of them and considered why or when an ERP might be more successful than an EEG. But remember, you've been given a scenario here, so this is where you get the main part of your marks for relating it back. So if Mark could have presented the patient with a stimulus to assess talking ability if he used an ERP. However, stimuli are not used during the EEG method of investigating the brain. So the first point you've done is made sure that you've distinguished between an ERP and an EEG and explain why in some cases an ERP might be better to use. The second part is bringing it back to the scenario. So in this specific case, in Mark's specific case, why might it have been better to use an ERP instead of an EEG? OK, another question for you here now. So in 1848, Phineas Gage, while working on a rail line, experienced a drastic accident in which a piece of iron went through his skull. Although Gage survived the ordeal, he did experience a change in personality, such as a loss of inhibition and anger. Now, again, you've got two questions that I'd like you to have a go at here. So the first question is to explain what the case of Phineas Gage concludes about the localization of brain function. And there are two marks available. But question number two, explain what difficulties Phineas Gage may have experienced if his motor cortex had been damaged in the incident. Three marks available. So pause the video here, have a go at the questions, and then when you are ready to check your answers against the mark scheme, just press play. So for question number one, explain what the case of Phineas Gage concludes about the localization of brain function, two marks available. You'll see here on the mark scheme that you would have achieved one mark if you had have written a limited or muddled explanation and two marks if your explanation had been more detailed and coherent. So you can see that change in the language within the mark scheme. One mark for it being limited or muddled. Two marks if your explanation was detailed and coherent. And by coherent, we mean makes sense. It's relevant to the actual question. OK, so another suggested answer by the mark scheme. The changes in Phineas Gage provide evidence to support the theory of localization of brain function, as it was believed that the area that the iron stake damaged was responsible for personality. So the main point here is that making sure you are relating your answer back to the case study. So it was asking about how Phineas Gage and the case of Phineas Gage concludes ideas about the localization of brain function. So the first part of the sentence that the mark scheme has given you is really shown focus towards the question by saying that the changes in Phineas Gage provided evidence to support the theory of localization of brain function. And then the second part is explaining how. So the idea that it was believed that the area that the iron stake had damaged in its accident was responsible for personality.
So for question number two, explain what difficulties Phineas Gage may have experienced if his motor cortex had been damaged in the incident. So this time what they really want you to think about is what is the function and the role of the motor cortex and if this was damaged, what would be some of the possible consequences for Phineas Gage? So three marks available on this question. Again, if we start from the bottom, if you were to achieve just one mark, this would have been for a muddled or limited explanation as to what some of the consequences of damage to the motor cortex in Phineas Gage would have been. Two marks for a less detailed explanation and three marks for a clear, coherent and detailed explanation using appropriate terminology. So again, if you compare the three marks to the one mark, you can see that three marks want to focus on clear, coherent, detailed, key terminology. One mark is that if you've included an explanation, but it's a little bit limited or a little bit muddled. So the first thing that the mark scheme has advised that you do is identify what is the role of the motor cortex? What do we associate with the motor cortex? So you can see here with the first bullet point, it states that the motor cortex is in the frontal lobe and is responsible for voluntary movements by sending signals to the muscles in the body. The regions of the motor area are arranged in a logical order. For example, the region that controls finger movements is located next to the region that controls the hand and arm and so on. So straight away, you've identified well, what is the role of the motor cortex. The second bullet point is relating it back to Phineas Gage. So we know what the motor cortex does. We know what is associated with the motor cortex, the function of it and where it's found. But what would happen if it was to be damaged? So Phineas Gage might have struggled with movements and coordination if this area of the brain was damaged. You could also talk here about Broca's area and the fact that it's close to this region, which means that Phineas Gage could have experienced difficulties with speech and sound production if there was damage here. So you've got three main bullet points here. The first, identifying the function, the location of the motor cortex. And the second and the third is more relating it back to Phineas Gage. So if his motor cortex was damaged, what might have been some of the consequences for Phineas? So well done on completing this biopsychology video brought to you by tutor to you Hopefully this video has really helped you to think about the mark scheme when you are attempting to answer some of the smaller mark questions available on the biopsychology section of paper two. And has also helped you think a little bit more about how you might move from achieving one or two marks in a smaller mark question to three or four marks just by giving that little bit more focus, detail, coherency within the answer that you are providing. So well done and good luck with your exam.